Hey, Jessica, we're back. Hi. We're back for more uncomfortable questions. More. From pet owners, from a pet <laughs> expert. But I've got a little announcement because I know you're going to tell a story about FedEx delivering dogs to people's houses now. This is I the know, craziest right? thing I've ever <laughs> heard of. But first, let's get to these questions, okay? Um, I've got a list of questions. Are you ready to answer them? I am ready. Let's go. No matter how uncomfortable? No matter how uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> this is something that I think everybody's curious about. We've heard about it in the news. Okay. And it's affected the entire world. So, oh. guys, if you're listening, guys, you don't want to miss this question. Um, can dogs actually smell COVID-19? And could we use that? somehow to help society to test people. Yeah, so really cool thing is happening. Um, so in May, I believe it was, May 2020, um, the University of Helsinki in Finland um, uh, let people know that they, they, they published their um, findings that they have been working with uh, dogs that work in the medical field to actually be able to smell and detect uh, urine of people who have been infected or who are currently infected with COVID-19 or the SARS-CoV-2, which is, I think, the, the technical term that, that their name that they've given it. So, uh, yes, there are dogs. They said that is very. they learned very fast, and they are astonishingly accurate at being able to detect the smell, which previously no person or animal had been able, like we didn't know what it smelled like. Um, but these, again, are dogs that are trained to sm sniff out things, and specifically um, in medical for medical use. So uh, I wouldn't say that your dog in your home <laughs> can tell you, can smell you and tell if you have COVID-19. Now, your dog may be able to smell you and know that you're sick just in general. That's something that dogs have been known to do. But COVID-19 specifically, yes, there are dogs that are being trained and they are doing astonishingly well at positively identifying urine of people who are infected with COVID-19. And this has some really promising, um, uh, this is promising data showing that it potentially in the future, dogs will be able to sniff out people like in airports or other, uh, other areas where large congregations of people are, that dogs will be able to s smell somebody and tell if they're infected and, and, and alert so that we can, we can, you know, weed through people that may, may not even know they're infected. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's, that's super cool. It seems like it is. every day there's a new thing a dog can do. I know. Right? Yeah, dogs are amazing. They're so incredibly helpful. Now, the next question is not so helpful that oh. dogs do. Dogs do this thing, and anybody who's had a puppy knows about this thing. Okay. And the question comes from Caroline, Caroline. and she's in Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh. Okay, so hello to the East Coast. We used to live up there. <laughs> and her question is, when is my puppy going to quit teething? He's chewing up everything. Yeah, so um, of course every puppy goes through this, this phase just like human babies do where their baby teeth fall out and adult teeth grow in and it can be very painful and uncomfortable. So they do go through a phase that we call teething. And it's a really good time. First of all, we need to take care of our dog and make sure that we are helping to alleviate any discomfort that we can during the teething process. But it's also a really good time to train with them on appropriate and inappropriate behaviors as far as biting goes. But teething generally in most dogs is gonna last until they're about six, seven, eight months old. So that's when you can expect the teething phase to be done with. But if you haven't done any training, you're still gonna have to work with your dog on appropriate and inappropriate biting. Um, so don't necessarily expect biting to end when teething ends if you haven't done any training with your dog. Um, I do go through the biting <laughs> phase in my beginner dog training series. So definitely check the link in the description below to the beginner dog training series playlist and work your way through those videos, I definitely recommend, especially if you have a puppy. But regardless, if you haven't done any training with your dog, if this is your first dog, if this is your 10th dog, go through the beginner dog training series. 
work with your dog week by week on everything we cover and you will see some really amazing results with your dog as long as you stick with it. Awesome. That'll be very comforting to those of us who've had puppies. <laughs> yeah. And it feels like they're never going to quit chewing stuff up. Right. <laughs> All right. So we've got another question. This okay. one here is from Yolanda in Yolanda. Helsinki. Oh. All right. So all the way around the world. Okay. Absolutely. And Yolanda has been going to her vet for a long time and she trusts her vet. Good. And the vet is now recommending a particular brand of food that her vet carries in the office. Okay. Now, I know when I go into a vet's office, I think, wow, if it's there, it's got to be the best because the vet's selling it. Is that true or is it just a money grab? I mean, what's going on here? So I don't know what food your vet is offering you, especially being that you're not in the United States. So I, I, I can't say for sure what food that is, but thank you for that question. Um, I am not a veterinarian and this is not medical advice. However, Veterinarians only get a few hours, in the United States at least, only get a few hours of nutrition education during their entire student career as, as a veterinary student. Um, now, there are veterinarians who go above and beyond to learn additional information about nutrition, and we love those veterinarians. We love all veterinarians, don't get me wrong, but the ones who go above and beyond, especially the ones that we know of as integrative veterinarians or holistic veterinarians, um, really, really go above and beyond to learn things way out of the realm of what traditional medicine teaches in veterinary school. Um, generally, at least in the United States, if you walk into a veterinarian's office and they're selling food, they're usually selling one of two brands. And the reason for that is that there are two major brands of pet food in the United States who sponsor whatever nutritional information a veterinary student receives, they actually pay for it. Um, and that depends on whatever university they go to because dinner, different universities receive funding from different companies. And um, so typically, if your vet is recommending a food, it is because whatever university they went to to get their veterinary degree was um, in part funded by that particular brand. And that was the nutrition education that they received. So that's what they know. Um, we've talked about nutrition before in the series and the reason that it's uncomfortable to talk about is because it really divides people um there are people who walk in a pet store and say this is the food i'm supposed to feed my pet and then there are other people who say why <laughs> right um and for me i'm one of those people that says why um Fresh, a, a balanced fresh food diet is going to be the best thing that you can feed your dog and, or cat. And uh, similarly for you, a balanced fresh food diet is going to be the best thing that you can eat as well. What we fuel our body with is going to make all of the difference in our health, in our energy, in um, our mood. What we fuel our body with completely controls the rest of our life. So if we can feed a balanced fresh food diet, now if your pet has some sort of medical condition where they need an adjusted diet, there are veterinarians out there who are formulating diets um, that are balanced and uh, created with fresh foods that are specifically designed for different ailments that a pet may be going through. So I highly recommend you seeking those out over a dry kibble diet or even um, a commercially made wet food diet, if at all possible, because that's really going to help fuel your pet and you're feeding them to thrive, not just survive. Feeding uh, commercially made kibbles and wet foods um, really are, are just allowing our dogs and cats to survive. Um, now, if you are going to feed a fresh food diet and not balance it, yeah, I would say, even if you balance over time, um, I would say that, you know, maybe a commercial diet would be a better, better 
choice for your pet because at least they're going to be getting balanced nutrition. Um, however, if you're willing to put in a little bit of effort, um, and really depending on which routes you go, you don't have to put in a ton of effort. You can contact um, a a veterinary nutritionist, get a customized meal plan for your pet, and you don't even have to put in the work. You're you're off and running with a balanced fresh food meal plan that is designed specifically for your pet, depending on if they have any medical needs. Um, so I know that's kind of a long-winded answer, but basically no, it's not the best food you can feed your pet. Um, but yeah, so I do talk about this <laughs> quite extensively in a lot of videos, um, and I can can post links to those videos in the description below. I definitely would recommend that you join the group as well. Um, the description is in the link because there are thousands of other pet parents there, and I, 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 I have resource files in the group, um, even specifically about food. So definitely recommend you check those out because there's, there's a lot for us um, to learn about kibble is the trend, right? We have only been feeding kibble to our pets for like 80 years now, and it's it's really not the best thing for our pets to be eating. So hopefully we, I mean, we are, we are starting to see trends where more and more, at least in the United States, more and more pet parents are feeding fresh food diets to our, our pets. And so hopefully this, this trend will start to end soon because it really is uh, more detrimental to our pets than anything else. All right. So I hope, did that answer? <laughs> that, that did, those are great answers. And I know people are gonna really be able to use that. It's gonna help them out. We really appreciate you taking time out for this. But I gotta ask you, at the beginning of this, I alluded to this, that FedEx is now delivering dogs <laughs> I think that's the strangest thing. Can you tell me about this story? I know. So it actually happened in March of this year, 2020, and it was in Denver, Colorado. So a um, a lab, a golden lab, or yeah, a golden lab named Catcher um, was in their home. The people were away at work, and uh, I guess there were some people working inside of the house, some you know construction going on, and that when they left for lunch, they didn't latch the door. Catcher got out. So a FedEx driver saw Catcher wandering around the streets, picked him up, put him in the truck, checked his collar, which fortunately had his address right on his collar. So he, um, the, the couple that lived in the house caught the whole thing on their ring doorbell camera. Um, the FedEx guy actually drove Catcher. He stopped his route drove Catcher back to his home and carried him in. The door was still wide open, so he took Catcher inside of the house and then closed and locked the door behind him. So it was a really wonderful story, and um, thank you so much to that FedEx driver who took time out of his day to return Catcher to his home because goodness knows anything could have happened to so people thinking they could just, you know, FedEx a dog to their house. That's not what it's oh, all no. about. Oh, no. Gosh, no. <laughs> okay, so that was a little misleading, but it did make it really interesting. So we really appreciate you taking time to do this. Can you tell me if they have more questions, uh, want to get more information, how could they go about doing that to get more information from you? Yes, so much information out there, guys. But definitely check. I have all of these links in the description below. I have a book that you can uh, get very inexpensively, a digital copy, download it right away, read it. It covers my seven miracle steps, which are the foundation of everything I teach all of my in-home clients before we start working on anything else. So I definitely recommend you check that out. I also have a link to the group. So join the family. Um, there are thousands of other pet parents in the group just waiting for you to join. You can share pictures and videos of your pets. You can share the wins. You can ask questions. I'm in the group. I answer questions of anybody, um, any and everybody that I can get to. So definitely join the group. We would love to have you. We're all waiting for you to join. I also have online video training courses and those are linked in the description below as well. And the beginner dog training series playlist which is a playlist right here on YouTube. I definitely recommend you go and check that out. Follow through week by week, work with your dog, and uh, that, that link to that playlist is in the description below. So uh, all of those resources are available to you with just a click of a button. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Jessica. Really appreciate it. And are you going to be coming back and doing more of these? I am going to be coming back and doing more of these because 
YouTube loves them, <laughs> apparently. Um, I'm getting so many more, like I get a lot of comments on my videos in general, but I'm getting so many more questions because of these videos. And I love being able to help you guys and help your dogs. That's the whole point of all of this. So keep those questions coming. Make sure you do post those in the comments below. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. Thank you so much for being here. If you are returning to my channel, thank you so much. If you are brand new and have never been here, I want to uh, share shout out to you as well. Thank you so much for being here. If you look right down there and that subscribe button is red, go ahead and click it. Turn it gray. When that happens, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much again for being here with me on YouTube and I will see you in our next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.